Hello everyone, let's do some integrals by using integration by substitution. So my next example, let's compute the integral of one over x cubed times the fourth root of one plus x, one over x squared dx. So a lot of action going on here, a bunch of fractions, there's a fourth root. My advice is if possible, rewrite your equation using powers, even if they're negative. So for any term that is at the denominator when they're alone, bring them up, change those powers into negative powers. And if you have any square root or nth root in general, use a proper notation. So here, one over x cubed, that's the same thing as x to the power minus three. The fourth root is the same thing as powering by one fourth. And one plus x squared is the same as one plus x to the power minus two. And then they'll load the x afterwards. So here I see there is an inside my power or my root, which is one plus x to the power minus two. So this is probably a good starting point for my substitution. And again here, if you think about it in a general way, what is the derivative of one plus x to the power minus two? Well, it's zero plus minus two x to the power minus three. So if your degree is minus two, the derivative is something of degree minus three, and we have that degree minus three outside, this is a strong indication that this is the right substitution. Anyway, so if you're doing it in two steps, so the first thing you're simply saying is that you're getting rid of that interior of your fourth root, and you're just calling that interior u. And now the goal is to get rid of all the x's of your equation. So we want to find that formula for dx, which you compute. So now back into my little box, the derivative of one is zero. The derivative of x to the power minus two is minus two x to the power minus three. And again, the simplest way to find a good formula for dx is just by swapping those two terms. So the minus two x to the power minus three goes downstairs under the du. And that's my formula for dx. So now back into my integral, I have the integral of x to the power minus three. For now, it's just waiting to be canceled. My u to the one fourth, that's fine. And now my dx just blossoms into that nice equation, freshly computed du over minus two x to the power minus three. And look at this, those two x to the power minus three, boom, they cancel. That minus two at the denominator, you can bring outside it as a coefficient. So if you want to see your pure basic derivative, that over minus two is a coefficient given by minus one over two, and you have a clean power rule that you're going to apply, that's my nice basic integral. I use my power formula, so you get minus one half, u to the power one four plus one will be u to the power five over four. So remember one over four plus one is one over four plus four over four, which is five over four. If you need to do the computation on the side or if you're using a calculator, then you don't have to worry about it. Anyways, so that over the same power. So whatever you have up is also down plus C. So that's apply my power rule. I keep my coefficient up front. If you're comfortable in your skin, you can simplify the coefficient a little bit so that five over four, when you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the flip. So you have five minus one over two times four over five. And now I can replace my u with my original formula, one plus x to the power minus two to the power five over four plus c. And if you simplify a little bit more, the four and the two here will become a minus, the four over two will be a two with the minus, so minus two over five. And then one plus, if you don't like negative powers, you don't have to, but you can write it as a fraction as one over x squared, five over x four plus c, and that's your final answer. Again, if you take this answer and you compute the derivative, you'll have to use chain rule here you will get back the integrand, the formula in your integral from your question. All right, for that example, that's it. Next example, let's compute the integral of e to the power minus x times in bracket one plus e to the power minus x 
all of that to the power of 5 dx. So again, not a basic integral here. If you think about substitution, you could be tempted to use the exponent of e in order to use a substitution and use u to be equal to minus x. But then the problem is you're not going to simplify that much with that substitution. Here, if you look at the interior of the power 5, here the 1 plus e to the power minus 5, um, that derivative will be minus 1 e to the power minus x, which we have outside of that power 5. So that's the better substitution here. So let's try it. So let's use 1 plus e to the power minus x for my substitution, which means that my integral is going to become e to the minus x times u now, so all the inside, the 1 plus uh, e to the minus x will become a nice clean u to the power 5 dx. And now the goal is to find a formula for dx. You go back in the box, you compute the derivative. The derivative of 1 is 1. The derivative of e to the power minus x, that's a mini chain rule. You're going to get e to the power minus x again times the derivative of minus x, which is minus 1. So here we have to use a mini chain rule. And now we're going to swap those two terms to find a formula for dx. So minus 1 e to the minus x um, goes under the du. So the formula for dx is du over minus 1 uh, e to the minus x. So back to my formula, my integral, so minus ex is waiting to be canceled. u5 is u5 and now dx blossoms into a nice du over 1, sorry, minus 1 e to the minus x. And look at this, the e to the minus x, they cancel perfectly. There's an over minus 1 that you can come, that you can bring outside as 1 over minus 1, which is also known as a nice minus 1. And now you only have to integrate this very nice power rule where n is 5. So let's go basic formula, keep the coefficient, u5 will become u5 plus 1, that's a u6 over 6 plus c, and as usual, a low plus c, and as usual, you replace all your u, even if you're trying to get rid of your x's, by thinking about u, your x's will come back at the end. Aww. Anyway, so your u6 is... 1 plus e to the minus x to the power 6 over 6. You keep your minus 1 up front, your coefficient, n plus c. And that's your family of antiderivatives. And as usual, if you compute the derivative of that formula, you're going to get back the integrand, the formula inside your integral. All right, for that example, that's it. My next example is one of my favorite one. Remember this. Uh, we want to integrate ln of x over x dx. Here, if you're just using those strategies to find the right u, you might be tempted to use u as x, so using the denominator. But if you do it and try it as a fun exercise, if you replace u by x, you will see, and you do the substitution correctly, that this integral would become the integral of ln u over u du. Basically, you're just changing the letter. You're not changing the problem. So this is kind of a remark. If you are trying substitution, u is never going to be x. It needs to be some sort of formula that depends on x. So what are we left with? Uh, here, I think the best way to clearly see what's going on, this formula here, the integral of ln x over x, can be better viewed, let's say, as the integral, let's put ln x first, multiplying, instead of dividing by x, we'll be multiplying by 1 over x. And here maybe you can get the intuition a bit more nicely. The derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. That's probably the correct substitution, and of course it is. So if I choose u to be uh, ln of x, so ln of x for u, so my integral now is the integral of u times 1 over x dx. Now back in the box, what is the derivative of ln x? Well, it's 1 over x. Now I'm going to cross multiply, bring the x up and the dx with the 1. And you're going to get x du is my formula for dx. So here dx will blow up 
into a nice x du. And as you can see, the two x's, they cancel each other. Nice. And then you're left with this nice basic integral, the integral of u du, which is u to the power 1. So a little power rule here. So you get u squared over 2 plus c. And then replace all your u by the original formula, which is in this case ln of x squared divided by 2 plus c. Again, for a good time, you have nothing to do on a Friday night. Compute that derivative. You have something to the power 2. You get 2, that's something to the power 1 times the inner derivative, which will be 1 over x. Those 2s will cancel and, will cancel, and then you'll be left with ln of x over x plus 0. It works perfectly. All right, for that very special example, that's it. All right, next example, let's compute the integral of e to the power of square root of x over square root of x dx. What I like with this question is that, ah, oh, what do I choose? Do I choose the exponent of the exponential function? Do I choose the denominator? Well, it's the exact same thing. Uh, so here, if you remember, this is a good piece of advice, square root of x, the derivative of square root of x is 1 over 2 square root of x, and I have a square root of x under. So here, the 1 above, so here the power of e, so the power of e is going to be my u substitution. So I'm going to use square root of x for u. So I'm not going to replace every square root of x by u, just the one for the exponent of the exponential function. And I hope that the other one is going to go away with the correct substitution. So now let's compute the formula for dx. So we know the derivative of u is if u is root of x is going to be 1 over 2 square root of x. Now if I square root of x, now if I cross multiply, so if I bring the 2 root of x up, need a nice arrow here, 2 root of x up, Come on, hello, hello, okay, yep. And the dx multiplying a 1, I'm going to get 2 root of x. The u is my dx. So in my formula, I get the integral of eu. And now dx over root of x. And now dx blossoms into 2 root of x. The u, nice. The square roots cancel each other. I can even bring the 2 outside. And I get my clean, basic integral with respect to u, the integral of eu du, which is going to turn into eu plus c, keeping the two up. And then going back to my formula for u, replacing it back by root of x. This is my family of antiderivative to e root of x plus c. Again, if you take the time, to compute the derivative of this one, small mini chain rule, you will get e to the root of x over root of x. Nice, clean example. All right, one more trickier example, and then I'll teach you another cool stuff. Anyways, I'll shut the fuck up. All right, one more example for this video, an example that is slightly trickier because we have to push the substitution uh, a little bit more in order to get rid of all the x's. Uh, so here we have to compute the integral of x square root of x minus 2. Um, so there's only one interior here is whatever is going on inside the square root. So I'm going to use x minus 2 for my u. So clearly here the only thing I'm doing is I'm replacing the inside of the square root by u and square root of u is also known as u to the power 1 half. And now I want a formula for my dx. Now if I go back inside my box, if I differentiate x minus 2, hmm, I'm just getting a 1. So if I cross multiply, if I bring dx with the 1, I get that dx is actually just du. So this integral here simplifies to x u to the 1 half, and dx turns into du. Oh no, what's going on here? I'm still stuck with that x here. So two, two things could be happening here. Either this is not a question that should be done by substitution, 
or sometimes if you have some leftovers after you replace your dx by the formula that you compute in terms of du sometimes the original substitution might have an answer for you so if you go back to the original substitution we see x is here and we can isolate x and create a formula that by bringing that minus 2 on the left side so x is also known as u plus 2 so here we have to use the original substitution to create a brand new formula for x and that brand new formula for x so it's possible and because it's up possible this is a u substitution question so now x turns into my leftover is replaced by u plus 2 so there's a little bit of algebra in order to be able to use my basic uh, integrals equations so here u to the one half times u that's u to the three half and two times u to the one half that's just u to the power one half and now i have a combination of basic formulas i can use my power rule twice so i'm going to get u to the power three half plus one so that's going to be five half over five half if you're comfortable in your skin when you divide by five over two might as well multiply by two over five but you know one step at a time plus two my new power is three over two my one half plus one over three over two plus c and the next move is just to replace every single occurrence of u by the original substitution x minus two so you're going to get so here i'm going to clean my coefficients i'm going to write two over five instead of dividing by five over two my u will go back into x minus 2 to the power of 5 over 2 plus the division by 2 over 2 i'm going to multiply by 2 third 2 times 2 third is going to you don't have to simplify coefficient this is not the most important part as long as you replace every single u by x minus 2 bobby is going to be super happy